The past couple of years we've seen an explosion in affordable consumer 3D scanners. Revopoint, 3D Maker Pro and lots of other small companies have released a ton of scanners in the $500 to $1000 range. But how good are these scanners really? Can they be used for 3D asset creation? And most importantly, can they replace the time-consuming photogrammetry method? To answer these questions I decided to buy one of these scanners and give it a try. I went with the seal scanner from 3D Maker Pro. It promises 0.01mm accuracy and a 0.05mm resolution and the ability to capture texture and formation. That's a lot of numbers, but let's see how good this scanner actually is. Three D Maker Pro sells two versions of the scanner: the Seal and Seal Light. The Seal Light is less accurate than its bigger brother, and it also doesn't capture any color information, so it doesn't fit the asset creation criteria. I was an early backer of the product, so I got the Seal Scanner for 360 euro, but the actual retail price is a little bit over 600 euro. The scanner comes with its own software. Without it, it's as good as a paperweight. This is something you definitely need to consider when buying a 3D scanner. The software can make or break the product. With budget scanners, you get it for free, and in most cases, it's a really rough experience. But once you reach the prosumer or the professional range of scanners, things improve a lot in that department. But it's a yearly recurring cost, so you need to keep that in mind when buying one of the higher priced models. The setup for Seal is clunky, to say the least. The scanner uses this cable, and I must say I absolutely hate it. You connect one side to the scanner, and the other side has two connections. One goes to the computer, and the other one provides power to the scanner. So we have to not only be near a computer, but near a power outlet too. It's definitely not the most elegant setup. 3D Maker Pro sells extra accessories though. There's one that connects to your phone, and there's also an automated turntable. So in theory, things could be less clunky than what you see here. But all these accessories cost extra. This is the default experience you would get if you just bought this scanner. Let's see now how it works. The scanner needs to hit a sweet spot when it comes to distance. As you can see, if we're too far away, the data gets noisy. And if we get too close, the object disappears. So we always need to check the screen to see where we're at. But it's no big deal since we also have a small preview of what we're scanning. We have different scanning methods to choose from. There's a table scan option and a freehand option. I've had problems with both. The table scan is a bit more time consuming because every time you change the object's orientation, you need to take it out of the turntable and register the area. You also have to have the whole object in the frame, which can be difficult to do in a lot of cases. There's also a hard cap of 600 frames, so in order to capture the whole object, you need to do several passes. But one of the bigger problems has to be the fact that the scanner always lost tracking of the object, no matter what. The freehand method also has its own set of problems. On one hand, there's no hard cap of 600 frames, but if you start moving around the object, you will face all sorts of issues. The system will lose tracking, and it's harder to maintain the proper distance from the object, so you'll always get the too far or too close messages. But the main issue is the fact that if you're on a computer, there's no way for you to monitor the screen and also do a proper 360 rotation around the object. So after many failed attempts, I figured out my own workflow that works 90% of the time, and it's a hybrid of the two. I have the object on a turntable, but I scan it in freehand, so I can quickly adjust the distance and move the scanner up and down. Once the scan from one side is complete, I rotate the object with the help of the turntable, and then repeat the process until that side is complete too. This method allows me to capture good data in one go. It also solves another big issue, which is aligning multiple scans. 9 times out of 10, the automatic alignment fails, and you have to align things manually. With this bus though, the automatic alignment works 
flawlessly. But with more complex objects, the automatic alignment will fail. Normally, that wouldn't be such a big deal since we have the manual alignment option too. But deciphering a messy point cloud can be a huge issue. More on that later on. So, if the object has the right properties, like this bust here, we can get some stunning results really, really fast. The scan is almost indistinguishable from the real thing. This is the perfect object to scan. The bust is not too shiny, it's gray, and it has the perfect size. It's not too small, and it's not too big. So, if your scans involve this type of objects, then you're good to go. Any of these budget scanners will do. By the way, this scan and all these scans you'll see in the video are available on my Patreon page. So if you want to take a closer look and inspect things yourself, check out the link in the description below. Let's see now some more ordinary objects. Unfortunately, anything else other than this gray bust is a very hit and miss affair. Mostly a miss. Let's take this pine cone as an example. Because it has darker tones, the scanner is having a hard time registering landmarks. I have to play with the brightness and sensitivity a lot in order to find a good middle ground. I do manage to capture some data, but because I can't move the scanner any closer, the inner parts of the pine cone are not captured. Moving the scanner closer will just make the object disappear. There are also points where the scanner just refuses to register. There's a point near the full 360 rotation where the system loses tracking. Because I have a turntable, I can return exactly to the previous point so the scanner can recover, but it will lose tracking again. So the only way to solve that issue is by doing multiple passes, which we have to do either way in order to capture the bottom part of the pine cone. But when I turn the pine cone sideways, things get really tricky really fast. The bottom part is captured very clearly since it's a lighter color, but when we move past that point, it's just one tracking error after another. I try to find the best setting possible, but the system cannot really handle the object. After quite a bit of time, I managed to complete the capture, but this is where we hit another issue, alignment of the two scans. The automatic method fails in a spectacular fashion. It's clear that it doesn't recognize which part is which, but that's okay since we still have the manual alignment. But the preview here doesn't make things easy for us. Because the point cloud is so messy, and because the pine cone is very symmetrical, I'm having a hard time figuring out which part is which. It would have been much more helpful if we could get a slightly more easy view to read. Maybe reducing the opacity of the points further from the camera. I don't know what the exact solution is, but this view is not helpful at all. After failing twice to register the right points, I tried scanning one more angle, but this time I have the pine cone just slightly tilted. The scanner still kept losing tracking and it was still a pain to try to align things manually, but in the end I managed to align two of the scans. As you can see, the result is not the best. There's a lot of noisy data and most of the scan looks very blobby. And so far, we haven't tried texture capturing. The way the scanning happens in this mode is a little bit different, so I was hopeful that things could work better here. And initially things go really well, the tracking is very good. That's until we reach a certain point where things just go haywire. As you can see, at some point the system gets confused and starts duplicating the pine cone. Changing the settings doesn't really make any difference, the scanner just keeps losing tracking. This was the point where I decided to use a tripod while on easy scan mode, and that did the trick. The tracking improved considerably, but the automatic alignment was still a fail. But with cleaner data and a colder point cloud, it was a little bit easier to align things manually. And thankfully, in the meshing process, the program corrects any minor alignment issues. But this is where we hit another issue. For some reason, the texture is completely black, so we can only evaluate the mesh. It's not great, but considering that the result is just two scans, I guess it's not too bad. 
I definitely though wouldn't use it as a final 3D asset. In comparison, here's how the same pinecone looks in photogrammetry. We get a much more detailed result, a good texture, and it also ended up taking less time than the amount of time it took us to fix the tracking with a 3D scanner. So that's the pinecone. Let's now move on to another example, a muffin. I chose the vanilla flavor on purpose because I wanted to ensure that the scanner would be able to register the object. A chocolate muffin would be too dark for the scanner. I legitimately thought that this would be a walk in the park. The object is not too dark, it's not too shiny, and it's not too small. Initially, things went quite well. The top-down view was easy to scan, but once I switched to a side view, this scanner started losing tracking again. Adjusting the settings improved things slightly, but there was a specific part on the muffin that would not scan no matter what. Aligning things here though was much easier, because it's very obvious which landmark is which. So let's see how the final muffin looks. The texture is not the best, and that has to do with how the device captures the color texture. It basically flashes a strong light onto the object, so the overall look is as harsh as flash photography. But even if the texture was good enough, the geometry is quite rough. There's not much detail there. Even using a light to help illuminate the whole scene doesn't make a difference. The texture and the geometry share the same characteristics as before. In comparison, here's how the exact same muffin looks with photogrammetry. We have a ridiculous amount of detail there, and we can then decimate the mesh however we want. And on top of that, we get a really clean texture. Everything looks exactly like the real thing. As you can see, the scanner has a hard time dealing with objects that photogrammetry has zero issues with. The pinecone and the muffin are the two types of objects that photogrammetry is really good at. There's a lot of variance in the texture, so the software has enough information to build a ridiculously detailed mesh. A budget 3D scanner like the Seal is mostly good with surfaces that are not rich in texture, like the Mill Bust we saw earlier, or this little Queen Doodad. In just a couple of minutes, we can capture the whole surface. Of course, the dark parts on the objects don't register at all, and that's why we have all these holes here, but still, it's impressive to see how fast we can capture an object like that. So in that sense, a 3D scanner is a nice accessory to have. It complements everything else photogrammetry can't scan. That is, if we don't want to use a spray or some other treatment on the surface. But at the same time, I don't know how useful that is, since a budget scanner doesn't have the ability to capture incredible details no matter what the numbers on a spec sheet say. Let's take as an example this garlic clove. A scanner can give us an object in just a couple of minutes, but there's not much detail there. The model is clean, but we need some more detail. In comparison, here's how the photogrammetry alternative looks. It's night and day, really. Of course, this took us more time to shoot, but in the end, we also get a much better result. The simple fact of the matter is that a budget scanner can only get us this far. So as the saying goes, you get what you pay for. $300 or $700 is not enough money for a good 3D scanner, at least if your aim is professional asset creation. There's a reason high-end scanners cost multiple thousands of dollars. But if you want to experiment with the 3D or you want to mess around with the 3D printing or quick prototyping, a cheap 3D scanner is a good enough solution. For asset creation though, you're better off with photogrammetry. With a relatively low budget, you can get some amazing results. So if you plan to spend $1,000 for a 3D scanner, I would suggest putting that money into photogrammetry gear instead. Getting a turntable, better lights, or a nicer lens. All of my photogrammetry gear is in the description below, so if you don't know where to start, have a look there. So. Yeah, I would have loved to tell you that a cheap uh, 3D scanner is the perfect solution for asset creation, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.